fanatics on the banks of Volca, cannibals in the mountain bunker, slavers on the shores of the dried out sea. How many monsters has the war given rise to? Or perhaps were they always there? And the war simply gave them a chance to show themselves and now we're stuck with them forever. Regardless, we can't afford to lose hope. We are getting ever closer to our dream. Finding a place where we could live, free from radiation and mutants. The maps we recovered in the desert have provided us with several promising options. And now the crew members are excitedly waiting for the colonel's decision on where the Aurora should go next. Currently though, the train is calmly rolling eastward. The crew rests and Stepan proposed to Katya. It was a proposal she couldn't refuse. I'm coughing. We've left those sands long ago, and it still persists. <clears throat> what does Crest even smoke? <laughs> it's terrible. In any case, I'm better now. I hate to interrupt, guys, but uh, you should come to the mess hall. The table is almost served. Thanks, Stepan. We'll be there in a moment. Shall we go, Artyom? Or shall we stay a little longer? It's so nice. You know, Artyom, I've been looking at Stepan and Katya, you and me, and thinking how lucky we are. It was so different with my parents. It was bad. Did I ever tell you why my mom died? Of course I didn't. It was because of Dad. He used to be even harsher back then. He used to come home from the barracks and reach for the bottle while taking off his boots. They'd quarrel, and then he'd stop appearing for a time. And while he was away, she'd start drinking too, and crying when she was sober. She'd feel better, would get kind of dreamy when drunk. You know how she used to call me, just A. She'd hug me and say, one day, A, you and I are going to go to Vladivostok, the city I was born in, and from there to a village on the ocean shore. I was five back then and didn't really get much, but I could imagine that village and the ocean so vividly because I believed her. And then she killed herself, drank some kind of poison. Father quit drinking after mom's death. Didn't ever pay much attention to me, but with her gone, he'd never leave me alone, took me along everywhere. We only talked about her a couple of times though. I used to have this doll, Jana. I played make-believe that she was my daughter and we went to the ocean together. Then my father hid it, told me it got lost. He probably didn't want me to agonize over mom's dream. Then I imagine she grew up and went to Vladivostok. And now I'm going, not to Vladivostok, but with you. The dream came true. By the way, I was always intrigued by what Dad dreams about. He should have some dreams, so what are they? Higher rank? He could choose any. Saving people? What would the saved do next? Sit underground? I never understood him. What does he hope for in life? What makes him happy? Nothing, perhaps. He never really had any time to think about tomorrow. Down in the metro? Those thoughts don't come casually. Here on the surface, though. 
I, for one, have something I want to do. I want to run through the sand barefoot. Build a sand castle for the kids. I'm imagining two. A boy and a girl. The boy would be a copy of you. We'd go swimming with mountains behind us. Wooden houses on the shore. The sun would wake us up every day, rising from the ocean. That harbor is our destination. Worth going there even if we have half the world to cross. Everyone should have a destination. A point on the map where they aspire to go, and where one could finally be happy. All our guys have their own. We broke out of the metro and are now starting to scatter. Not at once, of course. At first, we're all still running together, searching. But eventually, each of us will find a point like this and stay there. I don't know where my dad's destination is. Don't know where yours is either. But I know I love you a whole lot. Go, Artyom. I'll rest some more and join you later. Dog is dead. 
I killed him myself. All of the Moon Knight by Lair are confused now, like headless chickens. Our day has come. Fight them. Fight them however you can. Come where the Baron's rig used to be. Come, and we'll give you weapons. You served those dogs for too long. And what did you get in return? Only cruelty, death, and the holy flame, which I spit at. It is time to chase them away from our land for good now. All of our land, all oil, all food will be ours. Death to the Munai by Lair. What do you know? <laughs> Everything is perfect, Artyom. Follow us. Well, if that dance is not on awesome, <laughs> give it up! Wow, this is quite a show. <laughs> <laughs> this is ingenious! This is great! <laughs> great job! Come on, guys, give it your all! You have lots of hidden talents. Katya, <laughs> I've kept silent for too long, but now I simply must talk. I have to warn you about Stepan. He is incredibly, disgustingly nice and kind-hearted. Yes, no, indeed. I, as a misanthrope of note, am appalled. 
<laughs> I noticed that already. He is incredibly kind. Ah, uh, that's just slander. They are jealous. Oh, jealous, oh, finally, finally. jealousy is please. to be expected. We even Not the everyone reels. here is blessed with such an amazing wife, Pelin. Crest is right. I, for one, have positively gone green with jealousy already. Green to the core. <laughs> thank you. No, Katya, thank you. Look at Stepan. You made him happy. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> yes, now we only have to find a real saint who'd be up to making an honest man out of Alyosha, the poor sinner. Better yet, find a whole female monastery of saints. <laughs> That's the kind of time joint. <laughs> and why not? Solitude is tearing at my soul. Why, I've even been denied the comfort of confession. My usual confessors at Svet my Bulvar are kinda hard to reach. <laughs> <laughs> you this are your funny, usual guys. self, Alyosha. We all here, save for a few luckies. Could have just as well taken monastic vows. Thus, as soon as we arrive anywhere, <laughs> I'm going to a theological discussion. <laughs> Speaking of monks, Crest, you started telling a story back when the Baron's people came over for a party. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember that. Well, that story was just hearsay, not life experience. Oh, could you tell us now then? I bet Alyosha would like to hear a story about monks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I had a talk with this trader, Don Volga. He told me about one Italian monk who made himself a moving fortress out of this enormous dump truck. Wow, uh, that's a way to start. Of course! So he armored that truck with boilerplate, set some guns up, filled it all up with fuel, I guess he was basically swimming in it, and under orders from... How was it called? Uh, ah! The Pope! Took the truck from Rome to Venice. A journey just like ours. <laughs> well, we are looking for a new place to live. He was looking for some bomb or something. Some people have such interesting lives. Yeah, that's so different from our routine. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We really have nothing on that guy. Still, those traders, they have a bit less excitement in their everyday life, so they tell those tales, you know. What else did they tell you? I'm really hooked now. Italy is in the south. Did they tell you about the north? Of course they did. Okay, one radio amateur told me of Palerni Zuri, where life was easy and nice, yet it was a town near Arkhangelsk, or Murmansk, or yeah, out there somewhere. Oh, that place sounds wicked cold. Naturally, it is as north as it gets. Still, that town was built to serve as a nuclear power plant, so they had power, they had instruments, they even computers, like before the war. Just imagine how Salantius would react to that. Well, that old man would have started preaching the holiness of electricity there. He's a con man. Have you seen him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds like heaven. What is it like now? Oh yeah, they did have a nice thing going. Still, I didn't ever hear any transmission from them, and the guy who told me about them, he also told me they came under attack from some barbarians. Ah, there's always some danger. Did you hear anything about the Metro? The Metro? Why, you were the first I heard it from! <laughs> Still, I did hear about one guy from the Urals. Let me recall his name. Uh, uh, I think it was Ilya. Wait, I know him. Ilya Muramets. Yes, you nailed it, Sam. He's a man of legends. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to that man of legends? Ah, so he found a tunnel boring machine and decided to dig a tunnel to Moscow, but ended up arriving in hell itself instead. <laughs> uh, it could be that he just died on the way. Didn't even notice, I guess. <laughs> 
Crest, you already told us about the south, the north, the underground. Did you hear stories of the ocean? Anna says she had always dreamed of the ocean. Of course I did. Okay, this one I heard near Astrakhan. An ex-seaman told me that some of his pals back at the Baltic Sea found a working submarine in an abandoned dock or something. It was a nuclear missile sub called Ivan Grozny and they took it across the whole ocean looking for, uh, they're looking for something, naturally. What were they looking for? Well, he didn't tell. Didn't know or couldn't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> A nice story, but a bit hard to believe. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. it's they quite just hard to found believe. A working sub? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, not that hard. There were lots of those subs when the war broke out, and most of them were out in the sea. Most of those carried their orders since America is silent. Sorry about that, Sam. The subs on that side carried their orders too, so no sweat. Thanks. In any case, someone might have ignored the order. Instead, they moored quietly somewhere. Ah, oh, that reminds me. Okay, I also heard about old guy. He was a sub captain or something. And right after the war, he just ordered to park that sub in a small harbor near Vladivostok and started a settlement. They had a nuclear reactor on the sub. Enough power for a century, after all. Just like in Polyarne Zori. Yeah, so they build a settlement there near the sub and start enjoying themselves, okay? What happened next? I have no idea. Never heard anything else. Might still be there. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? I'd love to live on the seashore enjoying the fruits of civilization like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is horror show. Though I wouldn't go to Vladivostok to settle. Personally, I choose Hawaii. The palms, the sand, surfing. <sighs> That'll be the life. Artyom, take a seat. Artyom, we almost finished all the drinks already. Food's getting cold. Drinks getting hot. <laughs> take a seat. Don't be a stick in the mud. What did I miss? You should have seen them dance. Don't you worry. You'll get another chance. A moment of your attention, please. Half a year on the road and 4,000 clicks behind us. We have been through a lot. All right, people. I do understand I can't keep it a secret much longer. After a careful study of the satellite maps we've obtained <laughs> and much deliberation, we found a place we could call our new home. <coughs> it is the River Valley. There's forest and a hydroelectric power plant. This place is quite far from densely populated areas, which, as our journey has proven, is important. We're about two days away from it now. So, congratulations, hey, everyone! Yeah! 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 Hey! <laughs> yeah! Yet, uh, this is not our last order <laughs> of business for today. Stepan, Katya. Oh, Prince! Stepan, Katya, repeat after me. I take you to be my spouse. I take you to be my spouse. And vow to hold you from this day forward. And vow to for hold you from this day forward. For better or for, better or for, for worse. For richer, <coughs> for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish to and until to cherish death do us part. To us part. As the captain of this ship, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Live long and be happy. Oh, and Gorka! 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 Anna, 
What's happening? Be careful, people! Anna, please hold on. What's happening? What is it, Anna? What's that cough? Gotcha. Do something, please! Don't this can't be her. good. Give her air. Damn! Sorry, I didn't say anything. What are you talking about, baby? In the Yamantau, when they dragged me away, that ghoul doctor said my lungs were falling apart. The gas I breathed in that ammo dump said I How don't have lungs. How can you believe that monster? We've just been through a desert and all that sand, so that might be the reason. Katya, Artem, a few words. Go. I'm fine now. I don't know about this. The old man is furious. Oh. Artyom's getting chewed out today. It's not Artyom's fault. I fell into that stupid bunker all by myself. And if Dad says one word to him about it, I'll tear him a new one. Yes, this is getting old. As soon as something happens, it's always Artyom's fault, even when he had nothing to do with it. That's just his fate. Fate? Get out of here! Yes, in any case, Katya will calm the Colonel down. You shouldn't worry either, Anna. She'll fix you in no time at all. She's good. No doubt about that. We drew the lucky ticket with her, especially you, Stepan. That's a fact. Thank you, Anna. So, son, care to tell me what do we know, do please. now? Let us not panic and think constructively. So, Katya, what do you think? I think that trusting some degenerate's diagnosis wouldn't be wise. A move from humid metro into the desert with its dry heat and sandstorms is a stress for us. Yes, long. I do think she'd be hit really bad right off the start had it my been My thoughts gas. exactly. Thus, first I'll check her condition to the best of my knowledge. Also, we're approaching the valley with its forest air. That alone could heal her. I'm sorry to intervene, but did something happen? Oh, Anna coughed up some blood. My god. Do you really think it's the sin? Sounds more like TB to me, that's for sure. TB we can handle. We've got enough antibiotics, and air does help with that. What if... What if that degenerate was right, Katya? What do we do? Is there a medicine? There was an air defense battery station in our village. Right on the brink of war, they received a new drug. It saved a lot of people after gas exposure and general poisoning. I'll check my mom's records and find its name. I think it was produced in Novosibirsk. Right, Novosibirsk. Yermak, your opinion. For Anna's sake, I'd go to the edges of the earth. As for Novosibirsk, it's about 2,000 clicks. Then it's decided. We head for the valley. If it is suitable, we settle there. If Anna's state worsens, I'll take a group of volunteers to find that drug. So Katya, please, find that name for I'll us. I'll find it. Don't worry. One more thing, Artyom. I want no surprises in that valley. You are our most seasoned scout. So take the rail car, one volunteer, Go check everything out before we arrive. Let's go back for now. Tell Anna and the people to calm down. Poor girl. Now I understand why she was so down lately. Just imagine thinking about all that for so long. So, what is the jury's verdict? <laughs> now here are your orders, everyone. First of all, stay calm. The plan stands. We head for that valley with its fresh air and clean water. Then we go about settling there. If Anna's health... 
Dad, please. I repeat, Anna, in case you start getting worse, there's a drug Katya told us about, so we can go and find it for you if it is needed. Hmm, that sounds like a great plan. I'd also like to say this. Guys, please don't worry. I've been feeling pretty bad as it is for ruining the party. Oh, come on, you didn't ruin anything. I just brought myself down to rock bottom over that bastard from Yamantel. Though it must just be the sand and desert climate. Of course that must be it. We were discussing exactly that just now. All right, a toast to you guys. Just be happy together. To you, to you, to you. toast! Stefan, will you play that song? About oh. us. Oh! Easy as pie! Васин приехал на фронт со своей молодой женой Полковник Васин созвал свой полк и сказал им пойдем домой Мы ведем войну уже 70 лет, нас учили, что жизнь это бой Но по новым данным разведки мы воевали сами с собой Я видел генералов, они пьют и едят нашу смерть и где дети сходят с ума от того, что им нечего больше хотеть. А земля лежит в ржавчине, церкви смешались с золой. И если мы хотим, чтобы было куда вернуться, время вернуться домой. Этот поезд в огне, и нам не на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и нам некуда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничьей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. А кругом горят факелы, это сбор всех погибших частей. И люди, стрелявшие в наших отцов, строят планы на наших детей. Нас рожали под звуки марши, нас пугали тюрьмой. Но хватит ползать на брюхе, мы уже возвратились домой. Этот поезд в огне, и нам не на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и нам некуда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. Этот поезд в огне, и нам не на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и нам некуда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничьей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. This is definitely about us. There's even a kernel in it. Yes, it is time we took this land back. And one more thing. We don't want surprises like the ones we had on the Volga or in Yamantau. So we're sending a scouting party ahead on a rail car. Artyom needs a volunteer to support him. Me! Pick me! I'll check the hell out of that valley, please! <laughs> Something makes me think that Alyosha is mainly going to check if there are any Amazons or women in general there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all set. Frankly, I envy you, Stepan. You got a full family, a wife and child at once. And you don't have to worry about diapers or belly aches. Envy is a bad thing. <laughs> we're not the ones to avoid diapers, Colonel. In fact, we're planning to present Nastya with a little brother, if she doesn't object. I'd rather get a sister. We could play with dolls together. I could care for her. 
You could play Sparta in special operations with the brother. Ah, cut it out, Stepan. God knows we've had enough of operations. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'd like to retire. Time to have some life. You can't retire yet. You're too young. <laughs> I am old, Nastya. You're not. Ah. You said envy was a bad thing, Nadia. Huh? But what am I to do? Your mom has you, but my Anna doesn't have a smart girl like you. Dad! Don't dad me! A 20-year-old won't even think about children. But I would sure like to see grandchildren at my age. Yeah, you'd teach them CQC. Dual-wielding pistols! <laughs> <laughs> Come visit you. <laughs> of course, you're welcome, Nastya. The thing is, Grandpa Miller won't give up until he has grandchildren of his own. Hear that, Artyom? I don't even know what else to say. She's beautiful, sporting. Yeah, I'm Olympic level with a rifle. I get not having kids in Metro. Darkness, TB, rats, mutations. But what about here? <laughs> All right, Dad. We'll get to work on solving your problem tonight. At that note, how about a drink? To repopulation of Earth. To kids. Yes! To children! To, to children. children! So smooth. And oh. one more toast! <gasps> to the new colony! May it grow and oh, prosper! Great! <laughs> to the new to colony! The new colony. <laughs> and to having more women join it! <laughs> <laughs> Alyosha, I never doubted you! Yes, Alyosha. I don't think you should be worried about that. If we are successful, there will be people joining us. Honest, good people. I'm sure they survived too. Well, if any bad people decide to show up, they'll be sorry they did. <laughs> oh, definitely. When we're done with the bad apples here, we might think of something to do about Moscow. That's true. To love! To love! Damn. Just like Wow! It's your turn, Artyom. Come on, impress us! This heat is just unbearable, I must say. Sit with me, Artyom.
That's a beautiful song. Stepan, play some more. Stepan, could you give us that one? By Borisic. My pleasure. Ah, hello, Artyom. Hello, my friend. As you can see, we're busy with giving the weapons some proper care after the desert. Yeah, I hate sand, I must say. It's rough and coarse and gets everywhere. Irritates me to no end. So, as soon as we got out of that hellhole, I started cleaning and overhaul. And Duke, being the kind of guy that he is, volunteered to help. Yeah, volunteered my ass. You're a slave driver, like that Baron. <laughs> well, you should have taken a shambler for a dive in the sand. It's not a kalash. I didn't even shoot it afterwards. Thank God, I don't know if it even will shoot though. So you, young man, got lucky there. Yes, it is a mystery, really, how those bandits managed to keep their guns working in that desert. Though their gunsmiths are good. That gun you brought back is definitely custom made. A fine job. And it's been well maintained, too. This just warms my heart. Well, I wouldn't have a poor showing here either, given a chance. The Tihar with the new ammo would have worked wonders there. I'm sure you'll give it a try later, though. Well, yes! You could have barbecued them all! Yes, in any case, you don't need to worry about their weapons, Artyom. I'll have them in mint condition by the time we make our next stop. <laughs> this sand is something else. One more go, I guess. God damn it, it's still dirty. All right, another rub. God damn it, it's still dirty. All right, another rub. Anna sure gave us all this care. Oh, but don't you worry. It does look like tuberculosis, but Katya is a real medic. She, oh, she'll put her back on the feet in no time at all. Oh, besides, there's finally something nice ahead. A river, a forest, even a hydroelectric dam. <laughs> that sounds interesting, but I haven't fixed one yet. So don't worry, Artyomich. Everything will be fine. Soon we'll have a chance at normal lives at then, you know? Are you and Anna gonna have kids? Artyom, it's about time, bratucha! Moscow doesn't sound right for those with radiation and all, but the valley... Oh, that's the place. And Stepan and Katya would follow suit, too, since they're married. <laughs> we do have to populate the colony, you know. We'll build a good one, too, with some skilled people and, most importantly, smart people. And we'll surely attract more. And if some assholes decide to crash the party, ho, 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 we'll send them packing in no time with our guys. Of course, that valley needs checking out first. The colonel is absolutely right. But you and Alyosha, you can handle that, no problem. Boy, that cursed mountain? Oh. I had this nasty feeling back then. I even told the colonel, why? 
He was so eager to see that minister of his, he didn't care. Not quite like him, huh? Well, that's to be expected, you know? Everyone has a string which, when pulled, makes you forget about everything else. Tissy got shot like a dog and serves him right. Remember how we rushed to fight the Baron? That one was a real bastard, of course. Treating people like that over nothing, chia, just as bad as the Astrakhan gang. Tissy got shot like a dog and serves him right. Would be nice to wipe out all of his lieutenants. Uh, you know what? I'm sure Gil will handle them just fine. Uh, she's not a girl who'd leave a job half done, huh? <laughs> so what I'm saying is, we weren't roasting in that oven for nothing, huh? We also helped people besides getting those maps. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> I think I'll finish with your trophy here. Go prepare the rail car for your recon trip with Alyosha. Speaking of him, I think he wanted to go with you so badly because he also had a feeling, you know, in his usual direction. <laughs> Look after the Fletcher before he finds his uh, you know, head stuck somewhere nasty, will you? Still, I have to give it to you, Bratucha. Bringing this beauty here was a stroke of genius. I feel she's going to help us a lot. Mind you, I'm not trading my rail car for anything in the world, but this baby here is just amazing. Never mind the looks, her engine has been finely tuned and maintained. She's got a strengthened frame and springs, even her brakes are in perfect tool. The mechanic's skill and passion are as plain as day here, and I love that! I really, this thing reminds me of my old bay. The one I once drove out of Kadui. A ton and a half truck from that war had been rusting in a scrapyard for 40 years at least. Ran on firewood like the Aurora. Of course it was more memory than a truck. The cabin was all rotten, plywood don't keep that well. Platform was missing altogether, but the engine with the gearbox and the gas generator was still there. The frame was okay. Yeah, that was a piece of work. A month without taking a break. But in the end it ran. Then I put the body of the same minibus you have here on the top of the frame. And driving that Franken bus, I went as far as Astrakhan. Mind you, that thing didn't have more than 30 HP on its birthday. Terrible hassle, too. You not just have to chop firewood, you have to make the sticks even and nice, or else it doesn't run well. It takes a lot of experience, like heating up a proper sauna. You know? So, I'd spend half a day getting ready, a couple of hours driving. Yeah. Fell in love with that thing. Oi, mamachka. No wonder after all that effort. Still, had to give it to one bastard in Astrakhan. Otherwise, I would have just been killed right there, and that's if I got lucky. Huh? So that's how it went back then. As for this beauty, I'll take good care of her. For all time's sake, she'll be winning every car show we run across, huh? Isn't she a beauty? Oh, two crossovers of my eye, like a bride on her wedding day. Perfect! So, there you have it, Bratucha. There you have it. Station, thanks for the update. Good. 
station. Over and out. This sound is something else. One more go, I guess. Artyom, I, I wanted to tell you for some time, but hadn't had a chance. Anna asked if I wanted to stay back then. Well, sure I did. Uh, they were my people, even though I couldn't find any relatives. Besides, there are still lots of bandits to kill there. But the Baron is dead. Now Gyul can lead the people. They know those animals can be beaten. Cannon must be beaten. And now they have to fight for their freedom and take it by their own hand so that not to give it up ever again, despite any odds. Still, the initial push was given by us, by you. I won't forget this, Artyom, and I hope to one day pay this debt back. Kaprakmet, brother.